Alright, hello all, Dr. Alsop here. I hope you are having a great day. Uh, in this video, we're going to do a review on some of the specifics regarding the joints and the shoulder regions with an emphasis on the ligaments and how you can tell which one you are looking at. So this will be helpful in terms of preparing for the practical. practical. So spoiler alert, knowing your osteology is really, really important here. So make sure you have a foundation there and it will really help you uh, pretty easily be able to identify the ligaments in this region. So let's get right into it. And there are two major joints that you're going to have to identify um, in terms of looking at the shoulder region. The first is going to be your acromioclavicular joint, and that's going to be right around this region here. This is where the acromion of the scapula and, of course, your clavicle, they are going to articulate here. And you can really tell you are looking at an articulation point um, because there's this white, shiny kind of ligaments. It also could be part of the capsule that's covering this region. So you don't really see the two bo bones joining together unless the joint capsule has been opened up. But you can see kind of where it looks a little bit more robust in this region, so you're likely specifically at that articulation site. Now before we move on, um, I want you to get an idea or try to guess, if you're not familiar with this area quite yet, if we're looking at an anterior or a posterior view. So take a second, look at the structures. This is your scapula, this is your humerus, but are we looking at an anterior and posterior view? And for me, the tried and true way of knowing if you're looking at an anterior or posterior view in this region is this area right here, your scapular spine. If you can see the scapular spine, and you'd be able to see it even if muscles were, going, were associated um, with the donor in these regions, if you see a scapular spine, you are looking at a posterior view, which is what we're looking at here. So we're looking at a posterior view, and we know that because you can see this scapular spine. Sorry, I went a little, a little too far out over here. But this region right here is a scapular spine. If you continue the scapular spine all the way laterally, then you're over at the acromion, which meets up with the clavicle. And we know the clavicle is going to be more anteriorly placed. But we are looking at a posterior view here. Now, the glenohumeral joint is the true shoulder joint. And in this image, the joint capsule has actually been opened, and you can see exactly where it's been cut. And so we're actually looking into um, the specific parts or the osteological parts of the glenohumeral joint. So you can see a little bit of the humeral head right here. And you can see where the glenoid cavity is located. So the head is articulating with that glenoid cavity to form the glenohumeral joint or your true shoulder joint. All right. Now if I switch over to this image, you know you're looking at an anterior view. And the reason you know you're looking at an anterior view is because you do not see that scapular spine. All right, so we're looking at an anterior view. We know this because no scapular spine, you see just this um, anterior portion of the scapula. All right, so let's try to find the joints from this anterior view. So here is the clavicle. It has been cut here, but very clavicle-like. We've, we've been uh, talking about the clavicle since the beginning of the year, so hopefully we're feeling kind of familiar with that bone there. So you follow the clavicle to where it's going to meet the acromion. And you can see the acromion from, an, from the anterior view as well um, as it kind of curves around this region. So right around this region, we're getting to your AC joint. All right. In terms of the glenohumeral joint, or that true shoulder joint, that's going to be right over here. Now, in this particular um, specimen, we have not opened up the joint capsule. So you cannot see where the glenoid cavity is uh, articulating with the head of the humerus. But you can see a fairly shiny area right here. This is going to be associated with the ligaments and the joint capsule of the glenohumeral joint. So that's right around this region is your glenohumeral joint. 
Okay, so let's talk about some ligaments associated with the acromioclavicular joint. Uh, the first and probably the easiest is going to be your acromioclavicular ligament, which you can see here shaded in orange. This is an intrinsic or a capsular ligament of the AC joint, um, covering mostly the superior portions of the joint. There is an inferior portion of the AC ligament as well. And basically these are capsular, meaning that they are going to be thickening of the joint capsule. So it's really hard to tell the difference between the joint capsule and the acromioclavicular ligament in, the, in these particular cases. Fibers of um, the AC ligament often interweave with aponeuroses of the surrounding muscles in this region, um, most specifically your deltoid muscles. Okay, moving a bit more medially, and often considered the strongest ligaments of the AC joints are your caraco clavicular ligaments. All right, shaded here in blue. So this is the coracoclavicular ligament. It's actually a pair of ligaments. So how can we tell that this is the coracoclavicular ligaments? Well, I think, like we've said, the clavicle is pretty easy to locate, even though it's been cut here. So we know this is the clavicle. But what do you think the coraco uh, in the name is suggesting here. What does that mean? What do you think it's connecting to? The coracoid process. The coracoid process of the scapula is right around this region right here. So the cor coracoclavicular means a connection between the coracoid process and the clavicle. So remember, coracoid process is located in the anterior lateral portion of the scapula. This particular coracoid process seems to have some osteophytic growth, so it's a little bit larger than most of the coracoid processes. Plus, you do have the ligament still attached here, making it look a little bit bigger than what we, if you're just looking at a dry specimen, a dry osteological specimen. The coracoclavicular ligaments are extrinsic, which means they're completely separated from this articular capsule of the AC joint. Lastly, we have the coraco, so coracoid process, acromial ligament, so connecting the coracoid process and the acromion. The coracoacromial ligament is an important component along with the surrounding osteological structures of the coracoacromial arch, which is located just superior to the head of the humerus, so important in terms of protection of the superior portion of the glenohumeral joint. The subacromial bursa and the supraspinatus tendon would be located just deep to this arch. So you can see kind of how there's this, uh, this area right underneath. That's where the bursae and uh, the tendons associated with the, the tendon, excuse me, excuse me, of the supraspinatus, that's where it would be located. All right, still looking at an anterior view here. Um, but this time there is a muscle that was left on this particular specimen. Um, we know that we're looking at an anterior view because even if there were muscles um, associated with the specimen, you would still see the scapular spine. So you would still see the scapular spine in a posterior view. So we are looking at an anterior view here. You can see the transverse humeral ligament shaded here in light blue. Uh, right here, that's the only ligament that we're going to talk about in this particular case. This is going to connect the lesser tubercle and the greater tubercle and their crests and basically form a, a, a little tunnel um, to help keep certain things kind of staying in their place. So it's, it needs to be on this anterior view because the lesser tubercle is anterior, the greater tubercle is going to be lateral, so the ligament's going to be in between. Uh, almost more telling in terms of being able to identify this ligament is this little thing right here. All right, and like I said, this ligament's going to convert this groove into a canal, so it's going to hold in place the tendon sheath and the tendon of the long head of the biceps brace, brachii. And so that's what this tendon right here is. So you know if you have a tendon right here, you have a ligament closely associated with the greater tubercle and the lesser tubercle, then you're probably looking at the transverse humeral ligament. Also, we're looking at anterior view, so that would make sense. So these are some of the major clues to be able to lead you to identifying this ligament. All right, 
So these are the most easily viewed structures of the joints of the shoulder region. There are certainly other clinically important regions that we're going to be talking about in some of our active learning sessions. You'll hear from some of the clinical lecturers. Um, bursi are a, a big one that we are going to talk about in other areas, but you can't really see them very well in dissections. So they're not easily identified, and thus you aren't responsible for those particular things uh, in this setting. So just focus on the specific ligaments that we discuss for the practical. Please always feel free to reach out and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.